Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hull City career mode episode number 12 today. Starting off with deadline day. Transfer for Callum Elder here we're going to reject that. I'm going to be honest with you lot. Deadline day was a bit of a no-show for us. Did, don't have enough money to make any deals. Um, don't want to get... Don't want to split the squad up because it's going really well for us at this point in the season and you know we want to keep the squad as together as possible um eves is uh staying put and uh you saw his heroics in the last episode come on see so, yeah, i have a quick little look at a potential pre-contract there but he's not out of contract in this um point of the game i think shakta must have uh renewed it so deadline day done then, three hundred and sixty nine million spent on the day, and we get a and we get a little youth scout report there as well for, to the Wales scout first. We're taking one player, Gavin Bradley, young goalkeeper from England. We take in nobody, taking nobody. So you can see the academy there, two players in it, two Welsh boys, a fifty rated goalkeeper who we've just put in, and a fifty one rated striker. Don't really see much of them two. You don't expect to see much of them two in this save. You can see there, joint top. Well, we are top. Ahead of Portsmouth on goal difference. You can see going down the league there. Very quickly, feel free to slow the video down. So I've got, there's a, a lot to get through in this episode. You can see there, Keen Lewis Potter, top goal scorer. Jack Byrne with the most assists. And uh, Alex Palmer with uh, the most clean sheets for Lincoln. You can see there, I'm in the full kit as we take on Gillingham in the opening game of this episode. Um, we travel to the Priestfield Stadium. First goal would come after just six minutes. George Long from the goal kick would play it out to Brandon Fleming. Fleming would find Honeyman inside. Honeyman would play it across to Greg Doherty. Doherty would find Jack Byrne. Byrne would lay it off to Lewis Potter, who was running alongside him. And KLP would bag his 32nd goal of the the season in this one. He's an apps. He, he's on flames. You can see the title. Keen Lewis Potter is too good. That's because he is too good. He's on absolute rails. He's got League One on strings. No defence can stop him at this point in the season. He is too good. And he doubled his personal tally in the game and doubled the team's tally in this game as well there in the 17th minute with a lovely, lovely little finish. And won't be without complications though is Hugh Gia Kang who scored against us at the KCOM when we played these guys. Crosses it into Varan Oliver who puts it in for 2-1. And then um, Varan Oliver would make it 2-2 as well as he plays it through to O'Keefe there. O'Keefe holds it up, lifts the ball over to Coyle. Reese Burke doesn't clear it and Oliver does level it just before the break. So at this point I'm thinking, right, bit of flair from Jack Byrne please. Gets the ball passed back to him by Keen Lewis Potter, and he just does this. Chops back, lovely finish, back in front instantly, straight from kickoff. Lewis Potter to burn, and he did the rest. Keen Lewis Potter involved in every goal so far in this game. That well, that we have scored anyway. And just on the stroke of half time, we wouldn't stop there. Byrne would play it over to Lewis Potter, just over the top. Lewis Potter, beautiful bit of skill. His shot hits the post. I thought it was going to bounce in, but it just dribbled along the line. But Lewis Potter gets it back up, plays it to Doherty. He finds Malik Wilkes, and Wilkes stretches the lead to two goals, to 4-2, just before the break. We were absolutely on fire in this game. Absolutely on fire. Couldn't stop us. However, Gillingham were giving us a good fight. They were giving us a good fight. Graham would play it back to Mellis there. And he'd find Oliver. He'd find Stuart O'Keefe. Who's unmarked. And he popped it in past George Long. On, uh, on the number one's left hand side. And the, the Gillingham captain... Gets them, gets them ahead. And, uh, spicing, it was getting up to be a tasty end to this game. 
However, Greg Doherty would find George Honeyman. He'd play it to KLP and that would wrap the points up as KLP would bag his hat-trick in this game. 5-3. Again, as I said, no defence concern. Bloody hell, Jack Byrne. What are you doing there, mate? What are you doing there? Ogilvy with the free kick headed clear by... Uh, I'm not sure who that was. I think it was Callum Elder. Um, Dan Batty brings the ball down. Batty on the move, fresh off the bench. He's got the fresh legs. Can he beat Robbie McKenzie? No, he can't. McKenzie finds O'Keefe. He finds Miatka, who looks for the cross in. Callum Elder heads clear. And George Honeyman finds Jack Byrne. Byrne finds Lewis Potter. Can Robbie McKenzie stop Lewis Potter like he did Dan Batty? No, he can't. He gets sold. And that finish by Keen Lewis Potter. He gets one over his bro. Well, four over his bro he's got a four has Keen Lewis Potter points to the name on the back of the shirt as well says oi oi look at that look at that 10 out of 10 rating four goals and one assist as the Tigers take victory in this game next up then the quarter finals of the Papa John's trophy we travel to Milton Keynes as we take on MK Dons at the stadium M K. Only goal in this game would come in the 45th minute as Greaves would fail to win the knockdown. Agard would play it back to Fraser. He'd find Boateng. He'd be tackled though by Reese Burke. Brandon Fleming would find George Honeyman. Honeyman would give it to James Scott out on the left. Scott, just outside the penalty area, would play it back in to Honeyman who finished it beautifully into the far corner right on the stroke of half time. And the skipper would see us through to the semi-finals of the Papa John's trophy. We were very good in this game. MK Dons dominated. Yes, they did, but we defended very well. And man of the match is George Long. Some brilliant saves. Definitely kept the scoreline down. Next up, another away day. A trip to the Wham Stadium to take on Accrington Stanley. Who would them? Exactly. Um... Yeah, could we continue our unbeaten run in the league? Honeyman would find Lewis Potter in the sixth minute. Keen Lewis Potter, little ball roll, little cut back. He'd keep going. He'd round He'd round just everyone. He'd round everyone to make it 1-0. I didn't want him to pick the ball up there, but he just was too close to it. So that's 1-0 in the eighth minute. Um, Louis Coyle subbing in for Josh Emmanuel in this game. Emmanuel was very, very tired, so I gave Louis Coyle a little run out. He fans Greg Doherty. He fans Jack Byrne. Burn. Lovely little finish. Defender on the line could do absolutely nothing. And Jack Byrne in the 22nd minute makes it 2 0 to the Tigers. Little, little Abama Yang replica to celebrate that. I personally think he's better than Abama Yang. But <laughs> that's going to get some bites, isn't it? Just fishing. Just fishing. Um, the final goal in this game Jack Byrne, 30th minute, centre of the box, about 12 yards out. Beautiful finish by the Irishman. And that would do it. That's how this game would finish. I was, I would happily sit back in this game for the second half and just take anything that Accrington came at me with. And, uh, yeah, they had, they had a lot of attempts, can't lie. Jack Byrne, the man of the match, though. Two goals in the game. Yeah. Anyway, back against MK Dons, this time at home and this time in league action. Could we repeat the heroics of the... Uh, of the quarter final in Milton Keynes two games ago well no one game ago where we try our very hardest Honeyman would find Jack Byrne he'd find Keen Lewis Potter Lewis Potter with the cutback rounds Richard Keogh and puts it in for 1-0 in uh, the 16th minute and uh, waves his arm about as well he's very happy with that one points to the name on the back of the shirt once again Keno, too good too good Simply too good. He's on absolute fire. And it's because of him we're going up. It's because of him, I think, we are going up. Jack Byrne now on the ball. He fans George Honeyman. He fans Lewis Potter again. KLP turns his man, fans Byrne. Fans Honeyman who cuts back, gets tackled, but still keeps the ball. At this point, I was just spamming. I was just spamming the shoot button. I was just. I use alternate controls. I know, what a weirdo. I was just spamming it. It's like, come on, Honeyman, shoot, shoot. He timed it so badly, but it went in in the end. All was well, and we went in at the break, 2 0 up. Grooves heads clear. Honeyman helps it on. Jack Byrne on the left hand side. 
cuts past Williams. What's he going to do? He's going to play it out wide to Malik Wilkes. Wilkes cuts inside with the fake shot. Beautiful finish by Malik Wilkes to make it 3-0 in the 55th minute with a Harry Potter celebration as well. Or we'll have to exit Vampire, I don't know. And the next attack would start with Jacob Greaves as well. This time he'd play it to Josh Emmanuel back in for this game. He found Malik Wilkes. Wilkes to Lewis Potter. Lewis Potter down the right-hand side. Cuts back, pulls it back to Wilkes. And he finishes it off. 4-0. Two goals for Malik. A goal for KLP. And a goal for Honeyman as well. And a clean sheet. Two in a row. Two clean sheets in a row. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. I think we deserve that. Wilkes, your man of the match. You've got to love it. Next game, still here. It's still wet at the KCOM. And uh, we faced Fleetwood. Just lost their manager, Joey Barton. How would they cope? Well, Jacob Grizz would win the ball back on the halfway line. He'd find George Honeyman. Keen Lewis Potter would turn Connolly inside out and finish it into the top corner past Alex Kearns in goals. And uh, KLP, got to love it. Got to love it. Got to love it from KLP. Another goal for him. Another goal to add to his collection. This, though, absolute joke. Mackay finds Burns. He gives it back to Andrews. Well, no, just Andrew. You can see what's coming here, can't you? It's going to be a penalty. You know it. But it's going to be the softest penalty of all time. You ready? So Mackay turns Reese Burke. Greaves puts a foot in. Literally nothing happens. That is the harshest penalty I have ever seen. That is absolutely disgraceful. I'm keeping the replay in for this one. Just look at that. Nothing. There's nothing. Mackay doesn't feel it. It's a joke. Will Long save it? No, he won't. No, he won't. Level. Paddy Madden with a goal. That is an absolute disgrace. To quote Ty... Mopai, you're an absolute disgrace. You're a cheat. I hope Fleet would get relegated. However, this time, it's the ref. I'm not sure. I can't remember who the ref is. But anyway, ref, you're an absolute disgrace. You're a cheat. I hope you get relegated. I don't know. I don't know. We have to wait until the 77th minute for the next bit of action. Wilkes would head clear to Dan Batter. He'd find Tom Eaves. Eaves would turn Stubbs. He'd accelerate away. Go on, Evesy. Use your power. Use your fresh legs. To Lewis Potter, it's beautiful, beautiful football by Hull City. And Eves gives it to Lewis Potter. Yeah. And we won't be done there as Batty would win the header in the midfield. Doherty would play to, to, well, to Lewis Potter. Lewis Potter's pass would be cut out. However, Eves with the interception from Connolly's poor pass and the dink, the dink by Tom Eves. Eves in this team, he's got a very, very good goals to game record. However, that's because I bring him on with 10, 15 minutes to go against tired legs. When we're maybe drawing or or losing. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Swings and roundabouts. When he started for us earlier in the season, he went on this massive goal drought and literally nothing happened. You can see there we've got two players to the added to the Youth Academy, both of them from England. One is Dunn, one is Ward, a goalkeeper and a left winger. The table there as we start a new month, we are still top. And Lewis Potter, 39 goals in 36 games. The man is a machine. He's a machine. He's a machine. What else can I say? Final game of this episode then. Oxford away. Let's get straight into it. Straight from kickoff, something was going to happen here. Oxford with the kickoff. Would it be them who score or would it be us? Well, Lewis Potter with the interception there. gives Well, the ball just bounces to Jack Byrne. Lewis Potter, can he beat two of them? He, he intercept. He was squeezed out by two afros. Then intercepted the ball off one. Lewis Potter, after two minutes and 20 seconds, puts the ball in the back of the net. And we are leading very, very quickly in this one. And we need to see it out. So early, it's a long time to hold on to a lead and we would need to see it out. Brandon Fleming with a tackle there, finds James Scott. Scotty on the move. And he's going to keep going here, James Scott. He's still going. 
cuts back, beats Sepulveda. It's a brilliant finish at the keeper's near post. Now he's tripped over the keeper and he's stuck underneath Jack Byrne. That's an image I don't want to see again. And he does the little Abel Hernandez samba dance. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. And seven minutes later, it would be 3-0 as well. Honeyman would find Doherty who'd scoop it up, beat two, and put it into the bottom corner for 3-0 in the 28th minute. You'd think, oh yeah, you should have this game wrapped up. However, it's me, it's FIFA 21, and it's defending. That is something I cannot do. That is something I quite simply cannot do. As Claire gets the ball... He pops it in at George Long's near post. I nearly said she pops it in at near post because I said Claire. But anyway. The number two, Claire pops it in at the near post. And just before half time, Cooper would ride the slide of Jordi Device, who was uh, in for the suspended Reese Burke in this game. Ruffles would find Taylor, who'd flick it onto Cameron Brannigan, who'd. Uh, Caress the ball into uh, into the back of the net and over the goal line and past George Long and all that. Yeah, any more synonyms for that? Yeah. Henry, the league's second highest scorer, whips the corner in. More, what is going on there? Oh, Doherty! George Long gets stuck under more. And the ball just deflects off Doherty. And he's so... If he'd have ran instantly, he'd have got there. I was absolutely fuming when this goal went in. That's a real shame. 89th minute. We'd need a winner. We'd find one right about now. As Emmanuel would find Byrne. He'd play it inside to Lewis Potter. Who'd turn his man just about. Then he'd cut back. It's a beautiful finish by Kino. Oxford devastated again. I'll say it again. I'm not on PS5. I'm not on Xbox Series X. So you don't see any other fans palling on the pitch and manager running on the pitch and pulling his trousers down or anything like that. You just see more relaxed celebrations, but still elation from your side. And Lewis Potter, most definitely man of the match. Thank you very much for watching this one then, guys. It's a big one next time out with a cup semi-final in it. Join me for that very, very soon. See you later, everyone. Goodbye.